Good morning. Good morning. Here we are to worship in the first weekend in Lent. Remember, Lenten is a change in seasons for us. So our service has changed, some of our music has changed, but our love of the Lord and our worship of Him has not, nor will it ever change. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 We're going to start with a hymnal written for the season. Number 142 in the blue hymnal. As you are able, please stand. Um, that's not what it's called. What's open? 48. Okay. Please stand. begins on page 319 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 319. The bulletin you chose 351. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm going to have one of those mornings, y'all. I'm going to beg your attention all day long. <laughs> this is going to be one of them days. Page 351. In the middle of the page, bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. As you are able, please kneel. Page 350. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord have mercy. Page 351. 
Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The Apostle John wrote, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer to the Hebrews adds, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may lie in your way and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Page 356. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's Word. Good morning. Our first lesson comes from the last book of the Torah, Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God has given you as inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that excuse me, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into a land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. 
a wandering Armenian, was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien. Few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 through 16. The psalm is found on page 719 in the Book of Common Prayer and your online bulletin. Let us read Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 through 16 responsibly by whole verse. I will begin. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Continuing with verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no one be that I can see. Neither shall I pay him your hand in blood. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him against demons of the lion. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Our second lesson comes from the letter to the church in Rome, chapter 10, verses 8b through 13. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one who leaves with the heart and is so justified, for one who leaves with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during these days, and when they were over, he was famished. 
The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the nations of the world. The devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple. He said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Father God, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. Can I get the young ones to come on down? Nothing can keep you 
and separate and cause God not to love you. As it'll say in this movie we're going to watch this afternoon, he's really fond of you. And that you have a really special place in her heart. And that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you should always feel and know that you know that you are loved by God. If you ever have any question about that, just come see me. I'll tell you about it. Hey, thank you. You're so very welcome. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, we thank you that we can know what we know about you loving us. Reinforce that and bring that alive in these young ones' hearts this day and always. And this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen? All right. Now, I know you can help me get up off the floor. And I know that you will help me get up off the floor. I know because I know. Three, two, one. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. The lessons in our lectionary today are some of my favorites because they help us to know what we know. When we were teenagers, y'all remember back when you were teenagers, we thought we knew everything. Amen. 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 And for those of you who had teenagers, we know that they thought they knew everything. Amen? Yeah, they still do. And they still do. The difference is, is we now know what we don't know. They have no idea what they don't know. But they still think that they know everything that they don't know. And it's sometimes hard for us to tell them that they don't know what they think they know because we know what they don't know. <laughs> that was inspirationally divine. I couldn't. I know that I don't know that well enough to be able to say what I know about the thing not knowing again. But I do know that God wants us to know what we need to know about how He loves us and how this has been a pattern in His teaching to us throughout all times. We know that God will be our God and we will be his people. And he demonstrated that to the Israelites as they're about ready to go into the promised land. And we know when God says something, it's absolutely going to be true. There's not going to be any question. As Moses is telling the Israelites, in the 26th chapter, first verse, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance and you possess it and settle it. It doesn't say if you come. There isn't any doubt about what's going to happen. When you get there, this is going to be your land. And even though they knew that somebody else was already in the land, it was going to be theirs. All they had to do was just think back a couple of generations and remember the stories of how God led the people out of Egypt and told them all along what was going to happen to them. They are now standing on the cusp of that taking place. And they knew it was going to take place because God had been taking care of them all along. You shall take, you shall Take some of the first fruits of the ground when you harvest from the land that the Lord your God has given you. He is assuring them that when they get there, they're not going to be left alone. He's not saying if the rains come and if the land is good and if it's fertile, when you get there, you're going to have a harvest because I'm going to make sure of it. You're not going to starve and it's going to be a good harvest. And when all this takes place, you will know and you will say thank you because you're going to take some of the first of that and you're going to present it and you're going to remember where you have all come from. 
when you take it and you put it in the basket and you give it to the priest, you're going to be reminded of where you come from. You're going to say, a wandering Aramean was my ancestor. This they knew. This was nothing new to them. He went down to Egypt and lived as an alien, few in number, which they knew. And they're going to recount the story of how they cried out to God. God answered them through signs and wonders and miracles, got them to this point. This was something they knew. And there wasn't any question. Problem is, is, as you know, if you continue to read the uh, Old Testament, how fast they forgot what they knew. And they suffered the consequences of it. There are consequences if you forget what you know. Amen? Right? If you're driving down the road and you know that there's a 35 mile an hour speed limit sign hiding behind the bush as you're driving down your favorite road and a block and a half later there is almost always a gentleman with a gun just waiting for people to come zipping by at 45. If you get caught by this guy once, oops, you're bad. But if you forget it and you get caught again, there's consequences. So we need to remember what we know. In our gospel lesson, Jesus knows what he knows. And he reminds us that we should know that he knows. He goes through a series of trials. And in these trials and temptations, he has to remind Satan that Jesus knows what he knows and who he is. Tests in three different ways. First one, testing him with food. I mean, he'd been without food for 40 days, so he was going to be a little bit hungry. I mean, I don't go for 48 hours, let alone for 40 days without eating. And he was famished. Satan tempted him with a bodily assault. And that's a really powerful assault, man. When you hit us where we live, when you hit us in our feelings, when you hit us in, in our survival, we're likely to give in. And Jesus shut him down in a moment with the word when he says that man does not live by bread alone. In, in the Matthew version of that, he continues and says, but only by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The food that we eat is going to come through and is going to pass away. And we're going to have to continue to eat to sustain our nourishment. But when we read the word of God, it is food that will sustain us for the long haul. It is food that will sustain us through our every trial and temptation. It is food that will last forever. Now our problem is we should remember it once. We should read it once and remember us, but we forget. So that's why we are constantly encouraged to go back and reread and be reminded of what God has said and what God will do and how God will support us. We need to remember that we know that God's word is true. Satan tempts him a second time. And, and this is the one that gets most of us. Took him to Jerusalem and put him on the temple said, all of this out here is mine. And I can do with it whatever I please. I've got the power. And if you worship me, I'm going to give my power to you. The temptation of power. That's a mighty powerful temptation, amen? Anybody here ever been in a position of power? I know some of you have been. Right? When you have authority over other folks. Mm -hmm. Some of you are going, are you looking at me, Father Dad? <laughs> when you can command them to do or not do. When they're hanging on every word you say. Man, that's pretty intoxicating. Every husband is going, amen. <laughs> yeah. 
No, not that they have it, but their wives do. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. Power can be intoxicating, but if we know who only has the power, and that would be the Lord Jesus Christ, through God, emboldened by the Holy Spirit, that's the only real power. All the leaders of the world should recognize that they have no real power. That the only power comes from acknowledging Jesus as Lord. People who do really bad things when they think they are a power have forgotten and they don't know that it only comes from God. Jesus answered them, he says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. I'm not going to allow you to do that. And the last one is one of my favorites. Because what he wants to do is try to get Jesus to try to manipulate God. Anybody here ever try to manipulate God? <laughs> Anybody here trying to bargain with God? Anybody here ever say, well, if you do that, I will do this. If you save me, if you bring me up out of despair, if you correct the position that I've gotten myself into, if I can avoid the consequences, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Y'all have heard of the foxhole conversion? Hmm. It don't happen just in foxholes, my brothers and sisters. It happens every day, in every way, in every place. Because we forget that we know that God is truly in control. We forget that we know that God has a plan for us. And we know when we surrender and when we seek to follow God's plan, our lives are ultimately going to be better. They may not be easy, but they will absolutely be better. We cannot manipulate God. And by the time we recognize and know this, and as long as we remember this, and we're constantly seeking His will as opposed to trying to impose our will, then we know things will be better. Amen? <clears throat> now, the last one is one of my favorite verses. When engaging folks in the conversation, you know what's going to happen next. Y'all know what's going to happen next. What do you mean next? Well, at the end of this day, or at the end of your days, do you know what's going to happen next? Are you going to spend eternity with God or without God? Or are you going to heaven and be with God? Or are you going to be without him someplace else? Well, I sure hope so. inside the church say that. Every time I have given this particular sermon in the congregation, if I ask for a show of hands, how many people know that they are safe and going to heaven, show me hands. Here's about five of them. <laughs> because there are some who do not know what they need to know that they can be assured without a doubt there should be no question that they're going to. And it's very simply written for us in Romans. This passage in Romans comes at the end of a layout called the Roman Road, which is written through the book that will let you know how you can know. 
And it comes, period, full stop here. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, you have to confess it. You got to say it out loud. You just can't think it. You got to speak the words because when you speak the words, there is power. And there are times when things don't become real because you don't say them out loud. If you say them out loud, then you can accept them and then you can internalize them. You can release them. You can let them go. And then you know it's real. There are times when we don't want to say words out loud. There are circumstances and situations in our lives that happen to us that if we say it, it's going to become real and we don't want it to be real. You have just gone to the doctor. And they have run a whole bunch of tests. And the doctor's got the diagnosis and the prognosis and he's got all the x-rays and he's got the MRIs and he's got all the way out in front of him. And you're waiting for him to say the words. And in your mind you say, no, I can't speak it out loud. I can't say it out loud because if I say it out loud, that means it's going to be real. And I'm going to have to make some real tough choices in my life at this moment. So I can't say it. And then they say, well, the cancer is gone. You go, the cancer is what? It's gone. And although you really want to say, I am healed, that puts you in a whole different mindset. You can't say it. One that I know close to several people in the congregation, when things have fallen apart in their lives and they have not gone as well as you wanted them to do, and you're sitting in an office and you're talking with people and you're going to say, Yes, I need to divorce. My marriage is over. It's hard to say. Because if you say it, it becomes real. But when you say it, there's power in releasing it. And then you can begin to continue to follow where Christ has led you in that moment. So we have to speak the words. We have to confess. Jesus is Lord, which means I'm not. Jesus is Lord, which means my job is not. Jesus is Lord, which means my spouse is not. My bank account is not. My addiction is not. My problems are not. The idols of the world are not. My Lord Jesus is Lord. And if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, know it here and here. Is your God big enough to raise his son from the dead? Some of our gods are not that big. They're way too small. We don't believe in the miracles that are described for us in Scripture. Ever, anybody here heard of the Jefferson Bible? Thomas Jefferson Bible? A couple of you have have heard of it? Y'all know who Thomas Jefferson is, right? Right? One of the founding fathers. Took a Bible, read it, knew it well, but he had issues with it. And so what he did was he took several Bibles and he cut out of the Bible everything that he didn't agree with. He cut out all of the divinity of Jesus 
and they placed it in his own Bible, and that's the only thing he read. His God was really small. Because he didn't believe that Jesus was divine. Didn't truly believe that he was the Son of God. Well, we had just had Satan asking him if he was the Son of God, and Jesus answered him each time. If you confess with your lips and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, here's the point. You will be saved. You, not that you might. Not that there's a possibility. You have to do that and be a good person. You have to do that and work real hard. You have to do that and belong to this particular church. You have to do that and be baptized in this particular method. If you confess and you believe that you will be saved. And it's open and available to everyone. That's how you know that you know. Now the question is, is how many of y'all are willing to say it, that Jesus is Lord? Anybody here? Can I get a testify? Say it again. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Jesus is Lord. Somebody, somebody better stand up and testify that Jesus is Lord of my life. And not be afraid to say it. Not be ashamed to say it. That when you are asked, where is the joy coming from? You can look him dead in the eye and say, Jesus is Lord of my life, and that's where my joy comes from. Amen. Amen. And follow up and say, and I believe that God raised him from the dead. As God raised him because I'm a follower of his, he will raise me as well. That's it. That's how you know what you know. That's how you can know that you know. Each time I have given this particular part of the sermon, I can look out to the congregation and I know there's some of you who do not know that you know. But I want you to take a look around you. There are those of us who do. And whatever it is you need to know so that you can know, we will help you know so that you will know. Because there is no reason why you can't. So how many of y'all know today? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One of the things that we know is that we are in need of prayer today. But we need people to know what we believe. And it has been written for us very succinctly in the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand and affirm. If you know it's to be true, Brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is.
always be seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, the God of God of Him, the one being the Father, through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, we came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, He became the heart of the Virgin Mary, the Lord of the for our Savior Jesus Christ, the one who suffered, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in the course of his treasures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come and man in the Lord to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken with the prophets. We believe in one of the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and world. Prayers of the people can be found on page 329 in your book of common prayer. Uh, 383. 383. Uh, so I'm in the back. 383. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot to switch it. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the loving kindness of God and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Michael and Jerry are bishops, Daniel and Scott are priests, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Greg and Michelle, our governors, for the leaders of the nations, and for all the authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the and for the sick and the suffering, especially Paul, Michael. Bishop Michael V, Joe M, Johnny D, Rick, Robert, Jackie, Samuel, Taylor family, Chance, Diane, Bertha, Tina L, Keenan, Nicole, Greg, Brianna, and Terry. Let us all pray for the Lord to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, for we pray for Trinity on the Hill in Los Alamos, St. Jerome's in Chama, and St. Stephen's in Espanola. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For those in the military, both home and abroad, and for those in law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders, educators, and healthcare workers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Please add your own intercessions and petitions at this time, either silently or aloud. Almighty God, we pray for people in Ukraine that your peace rule the land, that the truth be seen, understood, and acknowledged. 
those in conflict turn their hearts to you, O Lord our God. With the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for all prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all of the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we, we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us. O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the communion of St. Luke and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another for all of our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Some announcements. If you read them, I don't have to. There's a calendar of events. It's got all kinds of upcoming and fun stuff. The only thing I would add to the calendar: two things. One, let's pray for a sensation of daylight savings time. So where can our calendar doesn't our internal clocks don't get confused twice a year? We're coming up to midterm elections. If you have an opportunity to talk to those who are running, ask them where they stand and tell them that you will give them the support of the entire congregation of St. Luke's if they will vote to change it and stop it, okay, please? Next weekend, Daylight Savings Time, and then there's a vestry meeting right after that. The day before, March 12th, we're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day here. We're going to have a St. Patrick's Day party at about 6 o'clock. We will have traditional Irish food that's being prepared. We're going to have here, here. beer, 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 yes. beer. Yes. Yes. Really? This is a question. Y'all don't know me very well, do you? <laughs> yes, we will be have. Well, not only we'll have a Guinness, but we'll have all manner of traditional Irish beverages. Okay, and Irish food. We'll have St. Patrick's Day uh, shenanigans and decorations, so please come Saturday. Um, there is a women's retreat which is happening. It's all here in the bulletin. So please read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest it. Birthdays and anniversaries? Oh, people being busted out left, right, and center. Come on down. Come on. And the whole family with you. Because you don't celebrate by yourself in here. I don't know. Gomer's on the other. Okay, so are, are we all lined up accordingly now? Okay, so we're going to start.
start over on this side because I'm looking this direction. Who's having the birthday? Okay, so who are you? I'm Veronica. Everybody say hi, Veronica. Hi, Veronica. <laughs> okay, I'm Veronica. You're celebrating a birthday. Exactly when is your birthday? Today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and because we know you have not reached a certain age yet, you're proud to share everybody how old you are, right? Yeah. How old are you going to? How old are you today? Seventeen. Whoa. Seventeen. Yeah. Wow. How do you feel? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Just me too. <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> and who's our bring over on this side? Okay, okay. And, and who are you? Patricia. Everybody say hi, Patricia. Hi, Patricia. And I know that you have a great, although I know that you are of an age that you still wants to color your hair. What? <laughs> yeah. She's going to smack me about that later. Um, <laughs> are you of an age that you would be mind sharing how old you are with us today? 41. 41 and around the clock. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is what you have to look forward to in almost twice your years. Uh, let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we give you thanks for the celebration of birth. Because with birth comes the opportunity to serve you for a lifetime. We thank you for being your children. And that's that you would continue to pour out your blessing on them. Guide, guard, and protect them. Be a light to their path, the path to their feet. And we ask the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Thank you. It's the Any other announcements? Oh, right after service today, uh, we will be re-showing the shack on the big screen. In the parish hall, we're going to need to do a little redecorating of the furniture. But if you haven't seen it or you'd like to see it again, there will be popcorn and refreshments. So stick around and watch the shack with us. Any other announcements for the end of the order? Thank you. Diane Bennett is going to be celebrating her birthday. She's going to be out of town. Well, we celebrated hers last night. Oh, okay. Yes. They're, they're worried about you and me. We got you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, together we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice and praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread, this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they can be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all of your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Bring us to Jesus. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host. We are his guests. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty, everyone who needs to experience the grace of Jesus Christ. Please come forward to the table of grace.
We're going to pause in our post-communion activities to officially do something uh, that's going to be very special for us. In your bulletin, you found a little half sheet. If you would pull that out, please. As many of you know, um, I served with Scott at St. Andrews until he left, until I left, <laughs> until I left. And then he retired, and then we had a conversation uh, where Scott wanted to know and was thinking out loud where he was going to worship. And I said, well, here, of course. And then COVID hit, and Scott needed to take about a year or so to decompress um, after 20, 32 years of service. And after 32 years of service, he has graciously accepted the invitation of the vestry to be our assisting priest. What that means is, is that he will be assisting me when it suits him. <laughs> and on those occasions where we have need. So you may hear him preaching from time to time. You may see him serving at the table from time to time. It will be good for you to hear somebody's voice besides mine. Amen? Amen. Thank God. <laughs> I teed that one up for you, thank you. <laughs> but what we want to do is something that rarely gets done in the churches. We are officially welcoming him by the service that we have prepared. So please stand. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you, Scott. Priests in the Diocese of the Rio Grande, we welcome. Mary Jo, his wife. <laughs> Scott. Freedom and the priest in the Diocese of the Rio Grande. We welcome you and Mary Jo to our church, St. Luke's La Union. In the name of this church, and on behalf of the vestry and the congregation of St. Luke's, I formally invite you to be our assisting priest. I accept your invitation, and with God's help, will help you in the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Scott may be to us an effective example in word and in action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that together we may rejoice in our glory with him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, from this time forth forevermore. The blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. And now our recessional hymn. Thank you. 